welcome to Sullivan's Farm. I'm just heading out to the far off knock here to do a bit of fencing. Another hour here, another hour there. I've been doing a bit in the morning, so I've, I've made something of a start. And I just need to put up permanent stakes and wire. Because what I had been doing was just using white stakes and a reel, which is a pain in the you know where, when you're taking it down and putting it up again. I've six different sets of white stakes and reels, and they're grand, and I use them all for paddocks up in the well field and the big field. But along here was never fenced before. The ditch was always enough to keep animals back, but I suppose things change and there just needs to be permanent fencing along here now. So we'll slowly but surely get there. My head is obviously not screwed on right today. I forgot the bucket for fencing. I forgot the gloves for handling the stakes. I forgot the saw. Yeah, I don't know, is it the weather? Here's what I needed. We'll start again. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Sullivan's Farm. I'm just heading out to the far off knock to do a bit of fencing. You can see the stakes where they are at the moment, but what I think I'm going to do is just move them out a little bit from the, the ditch and a little bit too close. Like that one is fine, but as you go up along, they, the ditch seems to come out a bit or the stakes seem to veer in a bit. I moved them out a little bit, not an awful lot, but just enough. And they're fairly, fairly straight in a line. Uh, straight enough for me anyway. If you're obsessive about that kind of thing, maybe skip the next few seconds. But they're straight enough. The ditch itself is fairly straight, but I just wanted to move it out a bit to leave a bit of room for the, the hedgerows and the floor and the fawn. And now a lot of the floor and the fawn here is for as bushes and briars. But you look, who's to say what bees and bats and all those other little creepy crawlies do or don't need. We leave a bit of space for it. There's only going to be one strand of electric fence along there. I'll stream underneath it to try and get back the bracken and let the grass come through. And then because there's only going to be one strand of electric fence, the cattle or the calves or, or whatever kind of animals will be able to graze underneath it as well. We ran short with a bit of wire, so we just have to get a roll or get a piece someplace. And I just stuck that into the ground so it won't roll back on itself anyway. Leave the fencing alone there till I sort out the wire in a while. We'll have a quick look at the rapeseed here. It's taken off over the past couple of days, the past week, I suppose, really. And if the weather anyway plays ball this year, we'll be, we'll be flying. Because last year when it was set, there was a smaller crop and then the weather turned in October. So the Wainlands went into it early. They went in on around the 1st of November, maybe the last week of October even. I'm hoping if we get a bit of a run this year at all, it'll be maybe a week or two weeks later. And maybe that's been too optimistic. But we'll see, because that would certainly give us a chance to get ahead with the bales and with the out early and all that after that. But when they go in early, you're just on the back foot straight away. We'll see. We cross our fingers and all that kind of an old carry on. Who will we say a prayer to? Was it St. Anthony or one of them lads? <laughs> I was out patching him there Sunday night instead of sitting inside with herself and a glass of wine. What hasn't helped is the fact that they're out in the middle of the field, I think, this year. Um, oh, Jesus Christ, your heart to be broke with them. Like, what I really need to do is to get the grease sorted. I put grease on a few of them and they haven't been touched. And apparently a single line of grease, one man was telling me, would be enough. So I just need to get that sorted. I think I've one more year of out winter and that's the plan. Um, and I really need to get the grease gun sorted for that. You wouldn't think it today, feeling the heat there on your arms is lovely. We had a lot of rain last night, and thankfully, just before the rain came yesterday evening and last night, we did a bit of this work. So, thanks to the neighbour Val for giving me a ring yesterday and a heads up, and we went over and we got a couple of bales of straw to keep things ticking over.
ended up being thrown just any place to get him in out of the rain or to get him in ahead of the rain and get back for the, the next load. So they're there in the way, but they're safe now. They're in out of the rain and I can move them when I know where they're going. One of the reasons I don't know where they're going just yet is because I'm not sure where the calves are going to go. I'm hoping to buy 20 calves in the autumn this year. And the plan would be to put them in the new shed. But it depends on whether I get that, that green mesh across up there first because I don't want to put calves in there for it to rain hard, even though the rain doesn't really come from that direction much, it comes the odd time. And they can't go in there if there's going to be a lot of rain and snow or anything else like that. And I haven't got the green mesh up there. But things are never that straightforward either. It's not just about what I want to do or what I get around to doing. There's going to be um, a man inspecting this kind of stuff here. Coming next week. And based on what he says, or I'm going to wait to see what he says before I decide where the calves can or can't go as well. A quick announcement at the end of this video. This is going to be my last YouTube video for a while. I've just ran out of time. The lads are back in school and there's a list of little jobs I need to get to now. And the couple of hours a week it took to record this video and edit it and upload it and that, all that kind of stuff. I just don't have the time. One thing, when I was trying to decide whether it was worth trying to carve out, don't ask me where I was going to get them, but where I was going to try and carve out the extra couple of hours every week to do the YouTube videos, one thing that put me off was just some of the personal insults. There's only two or three particular anonymous accounts, typically, who didn't just criticise what I was doing or apparently the state of the yard. But they were just plain insults. There was nothing constructive in them. And it wasn't a case of, well, you should try this or you could do the other or that doesn't look great. Why don't you do this instead? They were just plain insults. So look, the last word from me is that if you're commenting on somebody's video, be kind. We'll talk to you soon. Good luck.